Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you so much for joining us. And we continue our theme for the week, Surviving Friendly Fire. What killed Stonewall Jackson, the racist Confederate soldier? His own troops. His own troops killed him. What, ki who ki what killed Huey P. Long? who could have become president, senator, former governor of Louisiana back in the 1930s. His own guards did. Who, what, what killed Pat Tillman, who left the NFL to go fight in Afghanistan? He was killed by friendly fire. What is hurting many of us? Friendly fire. It is the pains that are inflicted upon us by people we love, we trust, and we had confidence in. And it can make you very bitter and very cynical and say, I will never put myself in a situation where I trust anyone again. It has been said, you've heard it, <laughs> that in life, there's only two things that are guaranteed, and that is uh, death and taxes. You've heard that, that you, you will die and you'll have to pay taxes. Add a third thing to the things that are guaranteed in life, not just death, not just taxes, but someone will hurt you. And when the hurt comes from somebody whom we trusted in, confided in, that's what's called friendly fire. And we're talking about how to survive friendly fire. Please know that if you're experiencing some friendly fire, someone that you trusted betrayed you, hurt you. Please know, my brothers and sisters, that you are not the first. Throughout the Bible, we don't think of it that way, but many of the people who are hurting and suffering is because somebody who was close to them did it to them. I mean, after all, who is the one that led the, 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 the soldiers to where Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane? Who was the one who kissed Jesus? It was a guy named Judas. That's friendly fire. Jesus, Judas has been with Jesus for three years and turned on him for 30 pieces of silver. That's friendly fire. And we all experience it. Even the great apostle Paul. You know, we're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. This is Paul's last epistle or the last uh, correspondence we have with the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. If this is the last chapter, the last verses. He's writing to Timothy and he says to Timothy, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm, <clears throat> but the Lord will judge him for what he has done. Be careful of him. Be careful of him for he fought against everything we said. The first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me. Everyone abandoned me. May it not be counted against them. Now, Paul is writing to Timothy about this fellow named Alexander the coppersmith. And Alexander the coppersmith at one time was a close ally of the apostle Paul. He was a coppersmith in Ephesus. They used to make um, uh, um, silver replicas of the God of the Ephesians, Diana, the God of the Ephesians. When Paul went to Ephesus, many uh, people who were worshiping Diana began to become Christians. And those who made the silver replicas of Diana felt that Paul was interfering with commerce and with their businesses, which caused a riot. Alexander the coppersmith was there with Paul to assist Paul in the riot. Acts 19, verse 33 says this. Acts 19, verse 33 says, some of the crowd prompted Alexander as the Jews pushed him forward and Alexander signals with his hand that he wished to explain something to the gathering. So Alexander was an ally of the apostle Paul, but he didn't stick. He soon abandoned the faith. And 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 19 and 20 says this about it, this Alexander. It says, cling to your faith in Christ. Keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their conscience and as a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Hymenius and Alexander are two examples. So this Alexander who was with Paul in Ephesus in the middle of the riot, has abandoned his faith. And now 
when you look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 14 through 16, it says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm, but the Lord will judge him for what he has done. Be careful for him, for he fought against everything we did. The first time I was brought before the judge. Now, what do you think happened? Paul doesn't, doesn't specify what actually happened, but it's easy to kind of connect the dots. Paul is on trial. The prosecution has a key witness to, to, to prove that Paul is a threat to Roman interest. And they say, now we'd like to introduce to you our, our key witness, our secret witness witness and guess who it is it's alexander the coppersmith who comes in there and testifies against paul when paul was on trial for his life and paul didn't see it coming and that's what makes friendly fire so difficult because it it comes and you don't see it coming it's happening paul had no way to know that it was alexander and notice what it says in verse 14 alexander the coppersmith did me much harm that word harm is the word injured. He injured me. And the word much to the word harm uh, means it was a large, what he did was huge. It was devastating. In fact, it could have been the testimony of Alexander the coppersmith that got Paul convicted. And that's the reason why Paul would be executed. He, his testimony against me was devastating. Now, I just reconstructed what Alexander the coppersmith did, but Paul did not. That's just my own reconstruction. Paul did not. And that speaks volumes about Paul. That in spite of the fact that Alexander the coppersmith heard him, Paul did not go into detail about what Alexander the coppersmith actually did. I'm just reconstructing it in my mind what may have happened. And the fact that Paul didn't go into any details speaks volumes about Paul, because usually when somebody has hurt us, someone who has whom we've, who's been close to us, what do we do? We constantly try to find some audience who will hear our pain, who will commensurate with the hurt that we are experiencing. We will find we'll go find anybody. You know what she did to me? You know what she said about me? You know what they did to me? And we just keep going over and over it and over it and over it again and nursing it and rehearsing it and nursing it and rehearsing it. But Paul doesn't go into any detail for two reasons. Because he didn't want to be consumed by it. And, and there's some things that we can be consumed by, which hurts us. Being bitter towards someone and hating someone doesn't hurt the person you hate. It hurts you. Hate is a cancer that mars the container. It's the equivalent of drinking a strychnine or a hemlock. Remember Socrates drunk hemlock. He died from hemlock. A lot of black folk died from hemlocks. He died from hemlock, but but he he had he drunk that hemlock, and many and to hate somebody is to drink hemlock, waiting for someone else to die. Paul hating Alexander the coppersmith will not affect Alexander the coppersmith, but it will affect Paul. So Paul doesn't go into any detail, and he's not harboring bitterness, and he's not feeling sorry for himself. In fact, the only reason why Paul mentions Alexander the Coppersmith is just for one reason. He's writing it because he wants to warn Timothy, man, watch out for this guy. Don't put your trust in him. That's the only reason why he is bringing it up. He just gives Alexander the Coppersmith to God. The point I want you to see as we close is simply this. I want you to see that Paul got hurt by friendly fire. Somebody did Paul wrong. And if Paul can be hurt by friendly fire, Paul had his Alexander the coppersmith. Jesus had his Judas. Alexander the coppersmith and, and Judas are the same type of, made of the same cloth, from the same cloth. David had Ahithophel. Remember Ahithophel. What a name, Ahithophel betrayed David. We all have friendly fire, but do like Paul. Don't harbor it. Don't keep repeating it. Don't go and tell everybody, you know, find something constructive to do. And Paul does it. You know what he does? He writes letters. He says, look, I'm going to use my energy not to get back and harbor hatred towards Alexander the Coppersmith. I'm going to use my energy to move forward. And I can't use forward 
motion energy if I am constantly looking back at my Alexander the Compass Smith and talking about Alexander the Compass Smith, about what Alexander the Compass Smith did to me. And, not, and it might not be Alexander, it might be Al, Al, Alicia the Compass Smith. I don't know, it could be a female. But we all will experience friendly fire and how you choose to respond to it determines whether you get bitter or whether you get better. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people today. We all have our Alexander the Coppersmiths. Help us to give them to you and move forward with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me today. If you don't have a church home, please contact us at St. Stephen Church. If you need prayer or somebody to talk to, we'll get back with you. Email us, newstart at ssclive.org. Today, tonight, rather, we'll have Bible study. I hope you'll join us with the pre-worship experience that begins at 6.30, and then worship begins at 7 o'clock. Got a word I'd like to share with you tonight. So come and join us tonight. Get some news you can use. Thank you again for being with me. Look, we'll pick up on this tomorrow, on Friendly Fire tomorrow. But until then, during this COVID-19, still it's a pandemic. It's spreading with the Delta variant. So you got to be wise. Stay safe. Be vaccinated. Stay safe. Stay sane. And remember that God is in control. I'll see you tomorrow.